in the name of the Lord, the name of God. I hope I find you well wherever you are. I hope you are well, you are fit. Some to them is the day, to some it's night time, some it's afternoon. But nevertheless, we have come now to congregate in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are going into the Word. There is power in the Word of God. There is power in the Word of Jesus. The Word alone is power. God is the Spirit. If you can understand the Word of God, salvation comes your way. When we speak of salvation, we speak of a broad uh, events that takes place in the life of a person. You are saved from that and you enter into the kingdom of light. Today we are speaking about uh, the power or authority. Power or authority. When we speak about the, the power or authority, we speak of what is capable to rule you or to command you or to lead you or to propel you to a certain dimension. Power or authority. When we are speaking of power or authority, we do not speak of physical power, but we speak of spiritual power, authority in the spirit. The scripture in the book of Matthew, chapter 28, verse number 18, the scripture reads, Jesus approached and breaking the silence said to them all authority all power of rule in heaven and on earth has been given to me he was referring to himself Jesus when he rose from the dead. The scripture reads in Matthew 28 verse number 18. Jesus approached and breaking the silence said to them. All authority, all power of rule. In heaven and on earth has been given to me. This was the statement from Jesus Christ when he rose from the dead. He approached and breaking their silence. They were silent because of what had happened. But Jesus approached them and he announced to them that uh, all authority, all power of rule, all power of rule, be it in heaven, be it on earth, it has been given to me. He was referring to himself. So today we are speaking about for there is no power or authority except from God in heaven. There is no power, there is no authority except from God in heaven. Anything else which presents itself is of power. The scripture clearly reveals that all power of rule, be it in heaven, 
be it on earth, was given to Jesus. So, we attain to this power, or we receive this power, we receive this authority. If you look carefully, before we get deeper into scriptures, it goes back to the book of Genesis. It goes back to the book of Genesis. Power and authority. In the book of Genesis. Chapter 1. Verse number 26. The Bible says. Uh, God said. Let us. Father. Son. And the Holy Spirit. That is Genesis chapter 1, verse number 26. We are speaking of power and authority. And God is saying to us, there is no power or authority except from God in heaven. Nothing has to command you, nothing has to rule you, except that authority comes from God in heaven. But the power and authority, we derive it from the book of Genesis. Where the Bible says uh, in Genesis 1 verse number 26, God said, quote, Let us, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, when he was saying these words, he was speaking of the deity. What we are now going to create or what we are going to build shall operate in power as a father. Shall operate in power as a son. Shall operate in power as the spirit. Is a spirit. Through his wisdom. He said. Let us. He was calling together. The deity. Of Godhead. And he said. Let us. Father. Son. And Holy Spirit. Make a mankind in our image. Let us make a man in our image. The image of the Father is to be in power. The image of the Son is to be in power. Image of the Spirit is in power. So he says that uh, these three deities in their combination they must form a human being uh, the combination of the deity father son and the holy spirit the deity the combination should be pronounced in humanity Human beings must possess the deity of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Then he says, here God was summoning all elements of authority and power so that whatever that will be created then, shall be exemplar. Trees were not given this deity. Animals were not given this deity. The Bible says he created uh, the rivers and the mountains uh, and he created all things and it was good. He never pronounced this deity. 
But this deity was pronounced because you are special. You are special. The image of the Father. The image of the Son. The image of the Spirit. When we are speaking of the image, we are speaking of the attributes. What will a father do? What would the, the Spirit do? What will the Son do? So this deity was summoned together in the creation of humanity. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. Let's dive in the word. God said, let us father, son, and Holy Spirit make mankind in our image. Image of power, image of authority. I'm saying there is no power or authority except from God in heaven. What we are forming now shall possess the deity of being a father, the son, and the Holy Spirit. And this, what we are forming shall be in our image. Then the scripture says, this shall be after our likeliness. What you are creating will just behave just like us. Will behave just as what the Father does. What the Spirit does. What the Son does. This is the deity summoned to build humanity. This shall be after our likeliness. And let them have complete authority over the fish of the sea. Listen to the scripture and see how God categorizes these things. The first dominion was a reference to the things of the sea. He says uh, authority over the fish of the sea. What is hidden? What men did not see? What men had not yet experienced? But God quickly says your authority, your power, your dominion. Principle number one. You shall have authority over the fish of the sea. I call it Kansas one joy, I go to see you. Ask whatever fish is not you. He was speaking about principalities, about creatures under the sea. Let us make men. In our own image. After our own likeness. And let them have complete authority. Let them have complete authority. Over the fish of the sea. Very interesting. Very extremely interesting. That God. Is not giving us. Authority to catch fish like Peter. But he's giving us authority over the fish. This is a hidden statement. It needs the Spirit of God to reveal to you what exactly God was referring to in terms of the fish. What would these fish do to us? How dangerous were they? What type of fish? That God is saying, you shall have authority over them. These fish of the sea. And let them have complete authority. Which means God had authority over 
the fish of the sea. When you speak of the marine kingdom, we speak of half fish, half human. These are creatures. They have a particular ability. And God here he says, in a proverbial way, he says that you shall have complete authority over the fish of the sea. Then, he moves on, he says, the birds of the air. The tempest, or if you want to call it, and over all the earth, and over everything that creeps upon the earth. This was the authority given to humanity. This is your authority. This belongs to you. But you can only achieve this by understanding the gospel. You understand the gospel, you believe in the gospel, you trust in the gospel, you turn away from the wicked ways. Then, power and authority, which comes from heaven, shall also be in you. Because we were ordained from creation. God said, let us, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, they did together. Let us make men in our own image, after our own likeness, and let them have complete authority over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, the, the, the beast, and over all the earth and over everything that creeps upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. So God created the man in his own image, singular. He then created the man in his own image. In the image and the likeness of God. My God. Which means... God has all these deities, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And now when man was created, he was created in his own image, singular. Not in their image. Today I'm not talking about Trinity. So God created man in his own image. In the image and likeness of God. The image and the likeness is just like God. You are just like God. Yo, you are just like the creator. Which means authority, power of rule is upon you. But we miss these things. Because we happen to believe or indulge into other things which are not godly. Verse number 27 in the book of Genesis. So God created man in his own image. In the image and likeness of God, he created him. Male and female. Picture a woman. Picture a man. You have the image of God. You have the deity of God. This was pronounced from the beginning. It's not something that we ask for. All what is required, we activate that by believing in the word. So simple. Believe in the word and activate the deity. You become your father. You know that if you are a father, you are in command. The son, all power, all authority, be it of rule, be it in heaven or on earth. All power, all authority of rule, in heaven, be it on earth, 
It is given to the Son, Jesus, the Messiah. So, God bless them and say to them, be fruitful and multiply. That's not the subject. Let's dwell into the Word. Let's go into the book of 1 Corinthians. Book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 1. Let's go to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse number 23. We are speaking of the power and authority. That there is no any other power except from God in heaven. power. No. The reason why you are easily intimidated, it is because you do not know, maybe, that you, it is written in scripture that you are a powerful person. Your deity. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 23. I like the word of God. The Bible says that uh, we preach Christ, Paul says. Paul writes, he says we preach Christ. Now we are getting into the avenues. How do we achieve this power and authority? Paul writes in the book of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 23. He says, we preach Christ, the Messiah, crucified. What we are speaking about, we are speaking about Christ, the Messiah, crucified. Preaching which to the Jews is a scandal. When we are preaching about Christ to the Jews, the remnant, the remnant, Tina yitin sile lani, Tina yitin sile lani, Ndisu vakabata vangeri recho kwa ni, Esi ndewele nsiti, Bati yitin sile lani, Licho njalo ni paipi, but Paul says when we are preaching this Christ, the Messiah crucified, to the Jews is a scandal and an offensive stumbling block that springs a snare or trap. When we are preaching Christ the Messiah, Crucified to the Jews, not Gentiles. La pas kuluma ngama kolo. Paul says when we're preaching Christ, the Messiah crucified. When we're preaching to the Jews, in see the land. Yeah. I'll, I'll have time to speak to you about the prophetic. Major prophets, minor prophets, when uh, the light, when the Spirit of God was fitting among, amongst men, between the book of Malachi and the book of Matthew, there are 400 years silent time when God was not speaking. And the Jews eventually started to separate. Some extracted themselves from the Jews. They became Pharisees. Some became Sadducees. 
Some became scribes. All these were an extract from the Jews. When the Spirit of God was very rare. Until we get into the book of Matthew chapter 1 verse 18. When the scripture says, now this is how Jesus was born. So during these times, people got lost. That's why Paul says, we preach Christ the Messiah crucified. Preaching which to the Jews. This preaching to the Jews is a scandal. And an offensive stumbling block that springs a snare or trap. When you preach Christ the Messiah, that is the creator, he is the healer, God manifests in the flesh, you are summoning them to manhandle you. Once you tell them that this Christ is not a child, God manifest in the flesh. He came to reconcile the world unto himself. Jesus Christ. He came to reconcile the world unto himself. And Paul says, when you preach this to the Jews, to them it is a scandal. I am sick of the Yet the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse number 19 says it was God personally present in Christ it was God personally present in Christ Paul says when we preach Christ to the Jews it is a scandal very scandalous. And by so doing, you'll be inviting a trap that eventually they will manhandle you. Just as they did Jesus Christ, the Messiah. He was arrested by the Jews, the remnant. When Pilate says, but this is your king. They say, no. We have got only one king, our king Caesar. They refused. But Pilate was announcing to them that this is your king. He even wrote an inscript. King of the Jews. Put it on his head. He never made it a pendle. Either a wrist pendle. But he had to put it on his head. King of the Jews, which was signaling authority that you may refuse. But this is what I've written. He's your king. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse, verse number 19. It was God personally present in Christ. God was present inside Christ. Reconciling and restoring the world to himself. Not counting up and holding against men for their trespasses, but cancelling them and committing to us the message of reconciliation, of the restoration to favor. God was in Christ. When you come back into scripture, Paul writes, says, uh, verse number 23 of chapter 1, 1 Corinthians. We preach Christ, the Messiah, crucified. Preaching which to the Jews is a scandal. What a scandal? What a scandal is uh, a person who will be doing something not in a proper way. Listen, the 
asim zira ya chia uno uya na yo isiriyo. Ilhela, okubera ngayo, hayi, akusiko. Then, the Paul says, when you preach Christ the Messiah crucified, to them it's a scandal. Total scandal. Scandalous. Person who's a in scandal, thieves, they portray to be doing the right thing, but the method at the end, which is wrong. Scandal. Ha! It's scandalous. And so I'll have seven zin. Cut over seven Ma scandal zari papa asabanamba. Asabari papa asabari kete abasaracho. Asim katimazo kune shumashin. That's what Paul was referring to. He was saying, we are preaching Christ the Messiah. We are preaching about the kingdom of God. We are preaching about heaven. But to the Jews, it was a scandal. They said, no. This one is just a baby. Not God. But the scripture says, it was God personally in Christ. Reconciling the world unto himself. We are speaking, there is no, uh, we are speaking about power. There is no power or authority except from heaven. That Lucifer does not live in heaven. So, let's get into the scripture. Let's move on. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse number 23. We preach Christ the Messiah crucified, which preaching to the Jews is a scandal and an offensive stumbling block. Uno tu kaiwewe. Zinoti waza. Waiwe na katu waidaba. Katu ula shega ngapi. Hii ula shega ngapi moe. Ah, awo muti just kuma ngayo iposifia fanana. We na ka usisi sikupe. We na mwoma usisi yo. The understanding is not in you. What you are speaking is almost the same. But you are just vice versa. These are these are these things. Christ was Christ. The Lamb of God. That's why he was born in a manger. The Lamb of God. The Lamb of God. Not God. Christ grew up in stature. And in wisdom. But inside, God was in him. Let's read it once more, then we move. We preach Christ the Messiah crucified. Preaching which to the Jews is a scandal. An, an offensive stumbling block that springs a snare or trap. And to the Gentiles, it is absurd, utterly unphilosophical nonsense. When you take the same message to the, to the Gentiles, they will tell you, this is unphilosophical, utterly unphilosophical. This is nonsense. Because uh, we know what we believe. We have our own gods. That's the Gentile community. So, we have to understand where power of salvation is derived from. But to those who are called, whether you are a Jew, whether you are a Greek, whether you are a Gentile, whether what you must know that Christ is the power of God. Christ is the power of God. And the wisdom of God. Christ is the power and the wisdom of God. As we dwell in the scripture, this is because the foolish thing that has its source in God. 
foolish things which have its source from God is wiser than men. And the weak thing that springs from God is stronger than men. For simple consider, by this God is saying, God uses simple things to confound the wise. The Gentiles were already speaking in terms of philosophy. They say, they say, what you are bringing, that Christ is the Savior, is just an philosophical, utterly nonsense. And the Jews says, no, this is a scandal. God is the creator. God has got all rule. This one is a baby. He is not. He is not a baby. Read 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 24. But to those who are called, if you are a Jew and you have been called by God, be it you are Greek, you have been called by God, you must know that Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. He is the power of God and the wisdom of God. When we speak, ah, when we speak about the wisdom of God, we start to see what God brought to the world, to the earthly planet, in a form of flesh. His wisdom, his planning, his knowledge, of which men could not comprehend, they could not understand, born of a woman, but God was inside, personally inside, reconciling the world unto himself. So, there is no power on earth. There is no authority on earth except from heaven. Anything that is dominating you, as long as it is not of God, you must know the devil is involved. You have to revisit the scriptures or come back unto the Lord because you were ordained from the beginning the deity of command deity of commanding being a son deity of the Holy Spirit was put in you when you were created a human being is one creature which can speak, reason, plan, put things in place, put things in order, destroy. A human being is very unique. Dominion. But while it's to where in that scripture, we see in the verse number 20, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, the scripture says, where is the wise man, the philosopher? Here God was speaking of how people were rejecting Christ. Okay, let's begin from verse number 19. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse number 19. For it is written, I will baffle and render useless and destroy the learning of the learned. Right? For it is written, I will baffle and render useless and destroy the learning of the learned and the philosophy of the philosophers. The philosophy of the philosophers First Corinthians chapter 1 verse number 19. Such circumstances were caused, were written by Paul because people in the Corinth, they had no understanding what Paul was talking about. But 
Paul was operating in the spirit of God, in the ways of the Lord. For it is written, I will baffle and render useless and destroy the learning of the learned. Destroying the learning of the learned. And the philosophy of the philosophers. And the cleverness of the clever. And the discernment of the discerning. I will frustrate and nullify them and bring them to nothing, says the Lord. Then he goes on, he says, where is the wise man, the philosopher? Where is the scribe? Listen now. He was speaking of people who were calling the writing or the teaching of Paul scandalous. Some say this is unphilosophical. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse number 20. Where is the wise man? God says, for it is written, I will baffle and render useless and destroy the learning of the learned. And the philosophy of the philosophers, and the cleverness of the clever, and the discernment of the discerning, I will frustrate and nullify them and bring them to nothing, says the Lord. Where is the wise man? The philosopher. Where is the scribe? Where is the scribe, the scholar? Where is the investigator, the logician, the debater? Of this present time and age, has not God shown up the nonsense and the folly of this world's wisdom? For when the world, with all its earthly wisdom, fail to perceive. For when the world with all its earthly wisdom Ruziwa wes seru panika Ruziwa wes seru pasirino Ulo azilonke ulo asemishabeni For when the world with all its earthly wisdom fail to perceive They fail to perceive. The scripture says that they fail to perceive or either recognize and know God by means of its own philosophy. For when the world with all its earthly wisdom failed to perceive, recognize, and know God by means of its philosophy, God in his wisdom was pleased through the foolishness of preaching salvation, procured by Christ. 